That was the grief, the grievance of Catherine Kuma. Somebody stands up, enters a car, drive for 10 hours, come for a meeting, and the pastor says he didn't have enough faith. It's a lie. Sometimes I'll feel like slapping that wash. Leave the person to fall. God is the one pulling the person down. Why are you stopping God? At least, if they hear the sound of the chair, they will know something happened. Then the ushers, three ushers, we owe one person like this. Are you taking the person to the mortuary? He said, you are a choosing generation. He didn't say you will be. You are. See, the problem we have is the things that present terms in scriptures, we make them past terms. Or we make them futuristic terms. That's one of the crises we have. What God makes present term, don't make it a futuristic term. You are a choosing generation. A royal priesthood. God's own special people. God to show forth the excellencies of God. So when you move in power, you are showing the excellencies of God. He didn't say you will, he said you are. It's a present term reality. We come to pray for people. He said you are healed. We say you will be healed. And then we shift the person's faith from now to the future. Because we pray, we didn't see this hand. If I pray for somebody and it's not healed, I say, you are healed. It's not your fault. I couldn't deliver it. I will come back. So your faith is where it is. In order to save faith, I won't run away and make it difficult for you. That's why it becomes more difficult to heal somebody that has already been prayed for. Because you make the person feel it can't be done. The faith that made a disabled person travel and endure stress for 10 hours. If that is not called faith, then we have to redefine what faith is. Or faith is not what we say it is. From your Jerusalem, begin to hunt demons. If somebody is possessed, nobody is to pray, I'm here. And pray. Somebody is sick, pray. And when you pray, check and keep checking. What happened? I prayed yesterday. Because you have a hope that your faith will manifest. And if you begin placing demand in a short while, you will shift. This is how it works. Nobody does it because it's born special. It's the same commodity that all of us have access to. That's why I said he dealt to every man the major of it. The same authority is what all of us are born by. You don't know who you are. Because you have not put demand on your calling. You have not placed demand on what God has put in you. You have shied away too many times. You saw the person in the public. The Holy Ghost said, pray for the person. You didn't know you were in the school. The Holy Ghost knows if you pray, the person will not be healed. But he's trying to develop your faith. The lady, the hand is withered. She is crippled in the public. The Holy Ghost knew if you pray, she will not be healed. But he said, pray. And then you say, wait. You now walk around until everybody leaves. And then you now sneak and come and bend down. In the name of Jesus, we heal. In the name of Jesus, we heal. And then you move. You are watching whether something will happen. You will never grow. Because you are not even sincere. when we talk about dead men it's not just victory over sin your ego will die you will not pray for it <laughs> I went for a meeting minister people were slain everywhere I saw somebody on the wheelchair the leg was withered I came and said the name of Jesus I made the decree jack the person up he fell down jack the person up he fell down I stood up and said it's not your fault <laughs> I'm still learning this thing. <laughs> you want people to see you as an accomplished apostle. You will end up creating impression and not impact. Come to a place because you know this, this song stare the people. You now carry that song. Sing the song. Sing the song. When people are stare, you say, talk, talk, talk. You will create impression and not impact. The Holy Ghost will keep training and building you. 
Most times I come for meetings. People know my songs already. I want to do impartation. I say, tell them to stop the keyboard. Because it's not the volume. It's the supply of the spirit. How much spirit do you have? And there are times where I say, stop the keyboard. I pray nobody is imparted. At least nothing visible happen. And I carry my shame and leave the altar. <laughs> and I go home to go and build more spirit. And I come again. He said, tell them to shut the, the sound. And I say, shut the sound. Lord, touch. One person will shake and the, the ushers, the ushers will never allow the person to fall so that they will know that somebody fell. The ushers will grab the person. It will, sometimes I will feel like slapping the usher. Leave the person to fall. God is the one pulling the person down. Why are you stopping God? At least, if they hear the sound of the chair, they will know something happened. Then the ushers, three ushers, we owe one person like this. Are you taking the person to the mortuary? Leave this person to fall. And at the end of the day, some of the people that came for the meeting say, Ah, is that the Apostle Mike? My brother, why well, we thank God? We thank God. <laughs> and I will know, I will know their heart. And then I'll carry my shame and go home. When I come home, the Holy Ghost will now say fast for seven days. If I didn't receive that shame, I wouldn't have fasted. I would have gone home and say, Oh boy, in a powerful meeting. And then every day people will be falling. And I will not go beyond that level. So when God wants to shift you, he looks for a way to provoke you so that you can exercise more. <laughs> Provokes you. And then you can put the food aside. And a time comes where you come to certain places as you are walking, the people are falling down. And they are not just falling down, they get up healed. Not headache, blood condition. And somebody tells you, I heard your message. I was cleansed of cancer. And then you sit down, you tell somebody it's well with you. And she gets a job in London. Not because you did anything. Somebody's certificate lost. And you come, you say, I declare that it is found. And they bring the certificate to the person. Not because you did anything. You have built your faith. You went through the corridor of shame. You went through the corridor of crisis. You went through the corridor of trials. Obeying the Holy Ghost. And he kept building your spiritual muscles. And now you can do anything through Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's the journey of authority. We grow in it. We grow. We don't receive it when we have stature. We receive it as babes, but we grow in it. How much have you grown the authority of God in your life? That's what your generation is looking for. They don't want to see your face. It's your horn they want to see. And it's God that exalts the horn of a man. He said, thy horn have I exalted like the horn of the unicorn. I've anointed you with fresh oil. There are many of you here that should be shaking your world now. But you eluded process. You ran away when the Holy Ghost was drawing you. When people had crisis, God woke you up to pray. You slept off. You thought it was only about the people. You didn't know it was a school of the spirit. Tonight God will heal the sick. But, but much more. Many will receive graces. To walk the same. Many will receive graces. To walk the same. If you are sick, wave at me. 